Hey guys, how are you? So in this video, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how Photoshop is not important in modern day web design and development. So I was chatting with somebody on a consult meeting and they were looking at a, I believe it was a college course and she showed me the curriculum that they had and they had Illustrator, Photoshop and a bunch of other stuff that were kind of like 1990s, maybe early 2000s style web design in terms of the curriculum. So let me just give you a little heads up. If you're looking at any web design training or curriculum, AI and Photoshop are not at all important. In fact, it's entirely optional. Now you have to understand, back in the 90s and say early 2000s, Photoshop had a certain level of importance because of the limitations of the web design technology at that time. So in the 90s, early 2000s, we'd use a lot of Photoshop, sometimes Illustrator, uh, essentially for image editing and processing because A, the bandwidth that we had in those days, the internet, the web, was far, far more restricted. So you had to really do a lot of heavy duty optimizations in terms of your images. So you need really, you really needed good image editing like Photoshop. Photoshop is still the king, but these days there are many apps out there that are far less expensive or free online stuff that allows you to edit images and optimize them to where you need to take them to be able to uh, deploy them in a website. But these days, because we now live in the days, uh, we're, we're in the day of YouTube now, where people are watching 4K video on their cell phones, highly efficient and optimized image optimization, basically being able to process images so that they still look good and are relatively small, is very unimportant these days. I'm not saying you should have huge bloated images, not at all, but it's, it's like you had to be skilled in at one point in time to be able to process images properly for the web, whether you could be deploying a, a JPEG for uh, photographs, they call it continuous tone images, or you're going to use a PNG or a GIF or something. You still use all these image formats. An image format is just a way to package up an image and each format, GIF, PNG, JPEG, each have their own advantages. Anyhow, anyhow. So you don't need Photoshop to do this anymore, number one. Number two, the need to do this is far, 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 far diminished. It's, it's at best an afterthought. Preparing images for a website may be 1% of the process, maybe 2% at most. And uh, so yeah, so number one, the reason it's not important anymore, Photoshop, Illustrator, and these old school tools for web design is because A, the bandwidth is just so huge now, we're downloading 4K video, so image optimization for speed is not an issue. Number two, uh, we used to use Photoshop and fancy image editing, we used to slice images uh, and so on to make up for the lack of flexibility in terms of layout in web design. This is prior to CSS3 or CSSP, as people will call it, CSS positioning. In the old days, we were very limited, so we would make up for that limitation by, as I said, as I said using tools like Photoshop or Corel, Draw or Paint or Illustrator to create elaborate layouts that uh, circumvented the limitations that you had in the coding, in the HTML, in the CSS. That's no longer the case anymore. In fact, you should not build websites with old school Photoshop Illustrator technique because they're not great for, they're not good for SEO. It's a much more encumbering process. Uh, if you need to update it, a uh, website, which you're going to need to do, any live website really has to be updated. You don't want to have to go back to Illustrator or Photoshop to be, able, to be able to make those updates. So yeah, you don't, you don't need Photoshop again. One of the main reasons was because of the lack of layout capability that the web technologies, the web languages, HTML and CSS, did not have at the time. Now they do, so you're cool, don't worry about it. Finally, we'd use Photoshop and Illustrator to create uh, headline text. So in the old days, we were very limited in terms of websites, in terms of the fonts you could use. There were just a few supported fonts, meaning there was, there was only a few fonts like Arial and Helvetica, or I forget the ones now, that you could count on that somebody would have installed on their computer. But again, with CSS3, you have the ability now to 
essentially download the font that you want to present to the person's computer on the fly. And because everybody's on high-speed internet for the most part, it just downloads like this, boom. So again, we used to use Illustrator and Photoshop to create headlines in, in a font that we wanted to use for that site. You have to understand, fonts are a very important part of layout, right? This goes back to graphic design, of course. If you are developing a website for a wedding site, you would use certain types of fonts. If you're developing a website for Halloween, you would use a different type of font. So these days, again, because of CSS3, you could download uh, fonts on the fly, so you don't need to use image-based fonts for headlines. Again, something we used to use in Photoshop, we, something we used to do with Photoshop and Illustrator. We don't have to do that anymore. So off the top of my head, those are some of the reasons why we used AI, um, AI Adobe, Adobe Illustrator, or drawing programs, or Photoshop. We used to use them heavily in web design and web development back in the day, and for layout reasons, of course. But we don't need to anymore. In fact, you should not do it that way. So Photoshop, Illustrator, and other traditional design tools like that uh, are just not not an important part of web design development anymore. It's like so unimportant. It's like it's I wouldn't I don't even teach it because it's not that important because it's like, it's like you do everything else and it's the last thing is oh we'll do a little image boom okay that that's the image editing it's like a little touch at the end so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Don't get me wrong that said you should understand the image formats that are embedded into websites so that's as I said as I said GIF, PNG and JPEGs and you understand when to use one or the other. So JPEG, just a quick lesson, JPEG is a type of compression that's great for continuous tone images, as they call it. Things like phot photography. Images that have a lot of gradations and colors. And uh, JPEG's algorithm is very efficient at compressing those type of images. And in fact, that's what's used for video compression. A MPEG is just a moving JPEGs. Uh, PNG uh, can do a good job. It's a more sophisticated, it's a very sophisticated image format, and it's better for images that have sharp images, that have sharp graphics, a very continuous color. Think of logos and stuff. If you need transparent backgrounds uh, that are very, very flexible. Again, I teach all this in my HTML course, so you don't, I'm not going to go over it here, but PNG is another very sophisticated image format. Uh, you can use it for, uh, again, for photography, for, but also for uh, graphics that have solid colors and sharp lines. Uh, why would you use JPEG over PNG for photography, photographs? Well, because it just compresses much better. You get a much higher quality looking image with a much smaller file size. Now, GIF, of course, was invented by a company called CompuServe. It's kind of an online community that predates the internet. And so they invented the GIF because it was a highly uh, compressed image format. Uh, you can animate GIFs. They use them for, um, they use GIFs still today for very small images because it's highly compressed. It's 8 bit. The more bits, the more information you have, the higher the quality. Um, so GIF is 8 bit. So it's, it's, if you want to upload super high quality images, you wouldn't use GIF, but for small little graphics, GIF has built in animation capabilities. So they use it for cinema graphs, which are basically uh, images that may have two or three frame, frames of animation. Anyway, I'll stop. JPEG, PNG, GIF, three image formats were widely used on the web. There's others, uh, vector-based images and so on, SVG. Back to the original subject. Yes, if you see a course that has a main focus is Photoshop, Illustrator, or an app like Dreamweaver, for example, mm, mm, Dreamweaver I can, I can live with because it's Dreamweaver, if you don't know, it's Adobe's web design and development software, so it has both code editor and uh, drag and drop tools, it's powerful. How many people use it? I don't know what the stats are, I'm sure a lot of people still use it, but at one point Dreamweaver was super dominant. Now though, if you, especially if you're getting to the coding end of things, the web development, uh, back end, full stack, people are not typically using Dreamweaver, although I'm sure in the comments people will say, I use Dreamweaver, it's good. I use Dreamweaver a lot in the past, but again, that's kind of like old school tools. 
you know, in web design development. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not way, I'm not in any way saying that Photoshop and Illustrator or Dreamweaver are bad tools. I'm not. I'm just saying that they're, they're really not that important in web design. And I don't teach them anymore because I want you to be totally flexible in terms of the tools that you use. You can use any tool you want. Once you've done a good web design and development course, you can use any tool that you want to uh, execute, to get the job done. They're just tools, like hammers and screwdrivers and wrenches, right? Your uh, skill as a web professional should not be dependent on whether or not you know uh, Illustrator or Photoshop. Again, not important at all. Not important at all. All right, I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about development and web design, web development, full stack, front end, what have you, WordPress, e-commerce, check out below. I have a mentoring program where I train people to think and be professional developers. It's designed for people who know nothing and they want to quickly develop the skills they need to get a job, start a career, and become professionals in the game. We'll talk soon.